In this video, we're going to talk about what is the role of a superintendent in construction. And you're going to love this video because this is my jam. We are going to have a great time together. So the reason that this is important is because some people, a lot of people actually don't know how to be a superintendent, what that role is for a superintendent in construction, and then it really hurts their experience. And not only does it hurt their experience, but their results, and people wanna win. And so you're gonna wanna watch this video today because these are the keys to winning. So we're gonna talk about how can a superintendent see the future? That's like the, the magic superpower, seeing the future. How can a superintendent do that? And what are the habits that allow you to do that? There's three of them, and we're gonna show you all three. And these three are key. If you don't know these, you're going to struggle. And I want you to have a good experience. And also there are some things that superintendents in our industry and construction abdicate and, and delegate to other people. And, it, and it's a huge mistake. You don't wanna do this. And so I'm gonna cover those as well. What are some things that, that only you can and should do in your role as a superintendent? in construction. And so by the end of this video, my hope is that you have a, a really ele an, an elevated understanding of what a superintendent does in construction and you feel fired up and motivated to go kick some butt and feel like you're winning by the time you go home every day. All right, so let's dig in. This is, this is super cool stuff. I once asked a really, I, I'd say prominent, but really successful construction manager when I was working at DPR Construction. I said, what is the role of a superintendent? And he gave me probably the coolest thinking answer that I could ever have hoped for. He said, Jason, project managers read the owner's mind and a superintendent sees the future. He was really attempting to get away from the boring, well, they do this, you know, dot, dot, dot. We really get back to that. What, what does a superintendent do? They see the future. Why see the future? Because we need to plan and prepare for the future and create flow. And so there's a couple of key things that really help a superintendent to see the future. And I'm going to tell you right now your master schedule, and your six-week make-ready look-ahead. Now, right now you're thinking, Jason, I knew that. Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Here's what I'm talking about. Building that plan and schedule yourself, or at least building it with the project manager or the scheduler or your company is absolutely key. Please, please, please do not just adopt or receive or inherit a schedule that somebody else created and then attempt to implement it. It's not going to work. You creating that master plan will allow you to see the future and really adjust it to where you know what's coming and you know when it's coming and you can keep that time beat on the project. Okay. The other thing, so that's long term, right? The other thing is the short term, your six week make ready look ahead. That's where you have the committed tasks hopefully from a pull plan, hopefully coordinated with your trade partners, right? And that plan and those activities will allow you to go in one by one and say, do we have the manpower, the materials, the information? Next activity, manpower, materials, information. Do we have the equipment? Do we have the layout? Do we have all the things that we need? And if not, that's a roadblock. That's something that's going to hold you up. That's something that you need to be working on to, to prevent so that we can have flow and construction. And so these two tools are amazing. Your master schedule and your six week make ready look ahead. And if you do this right, people will say, oh my gosh, this person, he or she is just awesome at seeing what needs to be done. And they really helped me to keep the beat of this project. And we are winning because of their influence. So that's the first step in becoming or being an awesome superintendent in construction. All right, so here, here's also one of my favorite parts. There's three habits to being a builder. And, and if uh, I'll say it like this, don't be mad at me. I, hey, don't be mad. But if we don't do this, we're more brokers than we are builders. I'm gonna tell you these three. Okay, so number one is we study the drawings for 15 to 30 minutes every day every day. And I know it's hard. I know that it's, I know that, I know what you're saying. I know that it's busy. I know that like we rarely have time and I know you're going to miss a day. I know you're going to accidentally not hit a day. It's fine. Just start the next day. Reading the drawings for 15 to 30 minutes every day is so crucial because that's what we get paid to do. 
And then here's the key. We see the future and we help the other team see the future. When we're studying the drawings, we take those details and those snippets, right? And those things that we're concerned about and we take a picture of them on our computer or on our drawing set and we will send those out and communicate to the other team members why it's important and how we should prepare. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is we are in the schedule for 15 to 30 minutes a day, right? That really helps you to see the future because you're looking at the projected future on your schedule. And then the same thing, how can we get it out of our head and to everyone else so we can do something with it? Well, the answer there is, again, when we see something that we want to prepare and we don't know ourselves if it's ready, we take a snippet of it, meaning on a Windows or a Mac computer, a screenshot of that, or if it's a printed set of plans, right, we take a picture of our plans and we send that out and we communicate so that people are ready and prepared to go and they can see the future with you. Number three, we take field walks. I'm going to say something that's kind of fun, but it's true. The building will talk to you. Like, that's just it. Like, the building will talk to you. I know that for a fact. You know, like, Jason, how can the building talk to you? Well, go try this and see if it's true. And I promise you, you'll find out that it's true. When you go do a reflection walk, when you're not distracted, everything's out of your mind and on paper, and you're like, I am here, I'm doing a walk, and you're walking around the construction project, and you're seeing things. You're seeing, hey, are there areas that aren't clean? Are there areas that are behind schedule? How is this crew doing over here? What? How's the feel? Of the job what's the morale like how are people feeling is there graffiti right and the building will tell you things that you should focus on to prepare and plan for the future and then guess what yep you guessed it we're going to take pictures of those things as you see them right and then you're going to send that out to people as reminders so they can see the future with you and we can plan and prepare work so those are the three key habits of a builder if we don't have those or at least do our best with those then we're brokers and not builders and i want you to be a builder because i want what's best for you i want you to have a great time doing it all right so i'm going to go through a checklist now of some really key items that you must focus and i'm going to say must as a as a as a superintendent in construction. Number one, build that team. You have that team assembled, right? Now it's time to build it. If you want some references, I love the Patrick Lencioni books, right? Uh, let me go through them. The Motive, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, Death by Meeting, The Advantage. These are great books for you to learn how to build teams. And if you want more references in the book, Elevating Construction Senior Superintendents, that is all about building teams if you want to know how to do it. But please do not get so focused on the doing, doing the do, and please also allocate time to build the team. Because building the team is first. If you have a healthy team, you'll have a healthy project. Next one, train your people. Please do not get into the habit of thinking that you can just hire your best people and leave them alone. There is, has never on LinkedIn or Facebook ever been anything dumber written or said than hire your best people and leave them alone and trust them to do your job. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. We don't do that. We hire the best people and we train them and we love them and we coach them and we connect with them and we help them and we mentor them and we make sure that they feel at home as a family. A superintendent will do that. You won't just have a field engineer or a project engineer over here to the side and be like, oh, I'm going to trust you. I'm assuming you got it. Like, no, we train our people. We train the foreman. We train our trade partners. We train every day. We train in the huddles you are the number one trainer on the construction project and if you're not good at it good luck you're welcome you get to get good at it because that's just one of those things that you get to do so superintendents are awesome trainers all right so we're about halfway through the video and i've got like five or six more key points that i know you're gonna love but before we get to that point i do want to ask you let's please comment on this video like what are some things that you're seeing what are some components of being a superintendent in construction that are important to you we want we want to share back and forth give us your wisdom please like and comment below we want to see what you have for us. All right, so now I'm going to liken the role of a superintendent in construction to being the captain of a ship, okay? So one, if you were a captain of a ship, one of the key things that you would have once you were charting a course forward, once you had the team, once you trained that team, is you would supply your ship. And so a superintendent will not, will never delegate material procurement to somebody else. 
he or she can partner with the PM, he or she can partner with the PE, but supplying that project site with materials is one of the main roles of a superintendent in construction. That means monitoring it, that means being hands-on. Definitely, if you wanna be the captain of your ship, you will make sure it's supplied and stocked. The other thing, if you're being the captain of your ship, and by the way, this is all in the book, Elevating Construction Senior Superintendents, but if you wanna be the captain of your ship, you will make sure the systems are functioning. On a ship, you know, you'll have the electrical system, you'll have the navigational system, you'll have the propulsion system. All of these systems must be functioning. And so as a superintendent, let's liken that to construction, you'll wanna make sure all of your construction systems are up and running and that they are functioning properly. Your procurement systems, your quality systems, your safety systems, you will want to monitor all of those throughout your day, your week, and your month as the lead superintendent on your site. And now that you know that your ship is stocked and that the systems are running, you'll want to map a course. Like you're not just gonna go get in a ship and just sit there. Well, I mean, unless we're on vacation, <laughs> right? But like, but like, if you're actually on like a, you have a purpose, you need to chart a course. So let's tie that to construction. A superintendent will chart a course with the PM to know where is the end date, what needs to be done by that time, and create a clear vision of where we're going. So chart that course as the captain of your ship. People need to know where they're going. Now that you have your course charted, we just need a a focus daily on where we're going, right? We know we know the long term, we know where we're going, but what are we gonna do today to get there, right? What does the short interval look like? What are we doing today, right? How many miles are we sailing? What direction are we going? What obstacles do we have? So let's liken that to construction. A superintendent will help everybody with the involvement of the trade partners, of course, according to the last planner system, work with the trades to know, hey, what's our plan for this week and specifically today? Because if we do today and more todays, all the days tied together will eventually end up hitting our end destination. So we must have a plan for today if we're gonna get there tomorrow. There's two more. Um, as you Once you have a ship with the right team that's trained, you have all the supplies, your systems are working, you know where you're going and you know where you're going every day, then the key is to scale clarity every single day for that long-term course and for that short-term and how the ship is working and how it's functioning and what the updates and news is. So let's tie that to construction. Every day, as the senior leader, you should be communicating over and over and over. What is it we're doing? Why are we doing it? When are we doing it? How are we doing it? Over and over and over, ad nauseum. When people are so tired of hearing you speak that they're getting a little bit agitated, great. We're almost to the point of getting started with how much you should be communicating. People need to hear things seven times. And so as the captain of your ship, yep, we have our course, yep, we have our plan for the day, but they should hear every day all of the what, where, why, when, and how from you over and over and over so that their picture in their mind of what we're doing is the same as yours. And lastly, your ship's not gonna be much good if it's sunk. So we need to keep that ship afloat. So how do we do that? We monitor and manage risks, right? We keep it safe. We keep it away from reefs. We keep it away from rocks and islands. We keep it away from things that would sink it, from, from storms. And so as the project superintendent or the lead superintendent, you're going to want to keep a really good lookout, right, for anything that could hurt your construction project. So again, risks, right? Making sure that you're looking at identifying and removing roadblocks working with your trade partners on the five most difficult things on the project site, right? Keep your ship afloat. So that means in construction, make sure that there's nothing that's a big enough risk that it's going to sink your project. So as captain of your ship, keep your ship afloat. Okay, so that's it. And I left you a little analogy here that hopefully you love is if, if you're the captain of your ship, right? If you're the captain of your ship, right? You have to have people on the ship they have to be trained, right? Uh, you have to have the right supplies so you can feed the people on the ship. All the systems need to be working on the ship. You need to know where that ship is going. You need to know where that ship is going today. The people need to see that same vision like you do so you're going to over communicate and you're gonna keep your ship afloat. So if you just remember that you're the captain of the ship, you'll remember these key points and hopefully be able to really enjoy and be successful in that role. All of these things are in the book's 
Elevating Construction Superintendents and Elevating Construction Senior Superintendents. One book will give you the vision of what a superintendent does. The other one will give you a vision of how to lead and build teams. You're going to want to go check those out. They're in print. They're on audio. You're going to love them. So please, as you leave this video, please go to those links and check out those books. And again, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed our time together because I know I have. So I appreciate all you. Love you. On we go.